Welcome back to another episode of Outside the Tub, the one where we discuss, dis discuss and debate topics around IndyCar, whether they be relevant news or things more from the past or things that are just making us go, hmm. And that's one that probably describes today. It's a hmm, can they? And as you've clicked on the thumbnail, you realize we're gonna be discussing today whether Rahul Letman Lanigan as a team can consistently compete at the top of IndyCar with IndyCar's big boys of Andretti, Ganassi, and Penske. And you could probably, uh, we'll come Aaron McLaren we'll again. Come we'll come that. on to that. But those are the traditional big three in terms of that. Stephen's excited. He's going to tell you about that. But for me, I'm going to jump straight into it and give you the history of Rahul Lenneman Lanigan Racing. So the team was founded in 1992 by... Bobby Rahal. He combined with Hogan Racing and it was Rahal Hogan Racing and it would get off to a great start as he would win his third and final championship with the team, uh, making him a three-time series kart series champion and obviously 1986 Indy 500 winner. Uh, the team would carry on and compete uh, in that name Rahal Hogan until uh 2004 because in 1996 uh late show host david letterman also bought into the team and in 2004 it became rahel letterman racing and that coincidentally is when they won their first indy 500 with buddy rice who won it from pole and they were uh, 2003 was the last time they competed in kart full time when it collapsed and then they moved over to the IRL to become IndyCar and between 2004 and 2008 they were competing uh, full time in the series. Between 2009 and 2011 they struggled for sponsorship and were struggling to kind of fund the team properly to run full time seats. Uh, until Mike Lanigan came along, who was uh, one of the co-owners of uh, Newman Haas Racing with Carl Haas and Paul Newman. But obviously with the collapse of Newman Haas Racing, he had somewhere to take his money uh, being the owner of MyJack. And he decided to partner up with Rahul and Letterman becoming Rahul Letterman Lanigan Racing. So 2012 with Takuma Sato, uh, would be the team's first full-time entry since the 2008 season. Wow, an important one, actually. We'll go quickly back. The closest they came to winning a championship outside of Bobby Rahal in that first season was actually with Swedish driver Kenny Brack back in 2001, I believe. If I've got that wrong, I apologise, where he became second in the standings. I'll put a correction up on screen if I've got it wrong from there. But in 2013, Graham, Bobby's son, joined the team full-time and he has been full-time with the team uh, ever since as he'd kind of done a few kind of one-off appearances. But 2013 was when he returned to the seat full-time and they've been full-time since 2013 and were one car up until 2018 when Takuma Sato returned to the team fresh off of winning the Indy 500 with Andretti Autosport in 2018, uh, 2017. And in 2020, we all know in COVID year, the year without fans, it was the year that Takuma Sato won his second Indy 500 and Rahul Letterman Lanigan's second Indy 500 and technically the first as Rahul Letterman Lanigan. Uh, we now know, obviously, in the closed season that uh, for the 2021, we had part-time a third seat run and now they will be a full-time three-car team from the 2022 seat onwards with Takuma Sato leaving the team at the end of 2021 and Graham Rahul will lead the attack with Jack Harvey and uh, rookie Christian Lundgaard going in the number 30 card. That's a very brief Ooh. overview Overview? Overview? <laughs> oh, Overview. You, you stopped the landing. I know. I did. <laughs> I've done it again. Uh, that is an overview of Rahul Letman Lanigan. I think, I imagine in a feature video, we'll probably do a deeper dive into the history of it. But yeah, that gives a brief outline of what they're like as a team. So a bit of an inconsistent time since joining the IRL, I'd say. Basically, but they peaked on day one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's essentially then, it. Yeah, it's been... Uh, Kind of, they've been midfield, obviously going part-time and coming back. 
and now kind of midfield. Are they looking at the top? Is what we'll be talking about. Yeah, so yeah. Stephen, I guess that's handing over to you. Discussions. Uh, I guess first question, are Rahul Letman Lanigan in the strongest position they are as a team since their cart days? Um, I guess you got to say yes, because they got three, ty- three full-time seats. Uh, they've had recent investment from Liberty Media, uh, wasn't it? No, High V. No, no, not this oh, year. Oh, did they have Liberty Media as well? No, I get my teams mixed up. I thought that was my shame. That's my shame. I was like, Hi V, recent investment into the team um, to fund three full time seats. Uh, exciting space for them. They've got young talent uh, in Christian Lingard. Uh, Long term consistency of Graham Rahal, and then obviously Jack Carvey. Uh, he's in the middle in the middle he's the middle <laughs> age one out of them <laughs> he's obviously very highly talented as well I'm not saying that. they've got three very good drivers uh, money in the bank yeah they're in a great position aren't they mm. I, I think there's a ruthless streak to them that if you are going to be a team that competes at the top because let's be honest Takuma Sata winning the Indy 500 for them in 2020 was huge. Mm. All right. Really, really big day for the team and big payday for the team as well. Yeah. All right. And also the wins and performances he did on track were superb. For what Takuma did for that team, he realistically should have been able to decide when he left as he was getting towards the end of the, his career. But Rahul Lemon and Lanigan have been ruthless. They ain't racing. Racing. That ain't racing. Yeah, you just got to have the best drivers at the best time, right? Well, absolutely. They've so- seen Takuma. They've gone, okay, yep. Yeah, he, he delivered at the 500, but his performances haven't always been there. Well, also the fact is, without beating around the bush, Takuma is at the end of his career. Yeah. An opportunity to get Jack Harvey who looks one of the really promising talents within the series, has had some fantastic performances. To combine with Graham, who has been the far more consistent out of a season form of Takuma and actually probably was their best shot at the Indy 500 in 2021, had it not been for that wheel falling off. And then obviously Christian Lungard, a highly rated talent from the European scene, coming in and did superb in qualifying uh, in his one performance at the IMS, which was enough to convince uh, the team to sign him up full time. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's that's my thing. Racing's all about, it's ruthless. It's a ruthless game. If you want to be at the top, you've got to be ruthless. So yeah, even though Dakuma did so much for the team, um, it was the right call for them to move forward and challenge for a championship rather than just one-off oval races. Mm. Yeah. So how they go about business, that's kind of off track, but on track in terms of the appointment. But off track it, they've also invested and are building uh, high-tech new facilities of uh, Rahul Lemon Lanigan Racing HQ type of thing. So that's serious investment. And that's, you know, a, a serious statement of intent to go, We don't want to be just this team in the middle who might win the odd 500, who might get the odd race win. We want to compete with the big boys. We And IndyCar is a platform that allows you to do that uh, with that investment if you get it. And with a great team behind you, you can compete and go from there. And I think with their roster of drivers, go from there. But but that's a serious statement from Rahul, the team, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And why this is all kind of a debate or discussion, it's not like, well, yeah, of course there'll be competing. It's been since 2002. Since 2002, with Sam Hornish Jr. at Panther Racing winning the championship, the championship's only been won by an Adretti driver, Penske driver, or a Chip Ganassi driver. No other team has won the championship. Hmm. Yeah, there have been challenges recently, last year, with Pato and McLaren, uh, 2016. Uh, yeah, Joseph Newgarden with Ed Carpenter Racing. So sometimes uh, in recent recently, there has been that one, one driver to really challenge the top. But other than that, the odds aren't stacked 
uh, in favour for one of the other teams outside the big three. No, and the the only thing you have to say, you then look at the other major thing within IndyCar, the Indy 500, winning that. Since 2014, Rahul Lehman Lanigan are the only team outside of those, uh, well, sorry, and Maya Shank Racing. Now, <laughs> from there, God, don't forget that. Up until 2020, <laughs> they broke, they basically broke the mould because Andretti won, then Penske won, Andretti won uh, tw- two years in a row, then Penske won two years in a row, then Rachel Letman Lanigan came along, and obviously Maya Shank this year with Elio Castroneves. How could you forget that? <laughs> uh, numpty there. But yeah, look, like you said, the odds are stacked against them. Arrow McLaren SP are this other team that coming up. And I did want to almost go, can Arrow uh, and Ray Hall consistently compete with the big boys? But I don't know. I kind of feel like Arrow are there with a driver. Because yes. realistically, Ganassi have traditionally only competed with Dixon. Pelot's come in strong yeah. from here. One of the Penske drivers have been on strong rather than several fighting for the championship. Yep. And it's usually one of the Andretti boys competing for the championship if they get or taking the lead in the team as it's been Colton Hearn, the car past season, and then Alexander Rossi before him uh, in terms of that. And obviously going further back, Ryan hunter Wreck type of thing. Yeah. That's... So with Pato Award, I think Aaron McLaren are there. Yeah. He's an exceptional talent that's brought that team right to the front. Mm. So yeah, obviously finishing fourth in 2020 and then third in 2021. They're already challenging for the top. Mm. So I guess we, we said that it's a great lineup and they're, they're in strong position, but I guess the next hard question we have to put into the debate is Penske, McLaughlin, um, Power, New Garden, Ganassi, Pelot, uh, Ericsson, Dixon, Johnson in there, but obviously won't be competing for a championship. And uh, then Andretti, Rossi, Herta, Grosjean, and uh, De Francesco as well. A bit like Johnson won't be competing for a championship. Just built, Johnson obviously building on his success and De Francesco in his rookie season. Is Rahul Harvey Lundgaard good enough? Ah, oh, it's such a that's that's where it kind of comes down to because obviously, yeah, you can have a great team, but if you have an even exceptional driver, they can just do all the work themselves. Like we've seen with Pato, not discrediting any of the team uh, performance for Aaron McLaren, they obviously do a fantastic job. But it's like that special talents that can really push forward, like Joseph Newgarden in twenty sixteen, coming third in the standards with. Ed Carpenter racing. Mm. Uh, you know, if you have that one exceptional talent, they can do the work for you, kind of. Yeah. And, you know, to back that up, it's not just us digging Aaron McLaren and speak. Before this season, they were like, we are two to three years away yeah. from competing for a championship. Up steps Pato this season. And now they've completely changed the goalposts yeah. of what they're aiming for. And, you know, if Felix then gets it together in support as well, which he was showing strengths of towards the back end of the season, then they've got a real strong partnership there before looking to expand to a third car full-time in 2023, Mm. as it looks like. Go from there. Having three cars does strengthen your team as well because it gives you more data, the drivers work together, more information. And I think where Rahul Letman lanigan as a team have been down is qualified. Uh, obviously, Graham's done good this year, but they just haven't quite found that extra two to three tenths yeah. that is stopping them consistently competing for race wins. That's going to be their main goal over the week, uh, the winter. But in Graham Rahal, now I, I think most people would say that he is a talent worthy of the name. All right, obviously. Some people may have questioned early on his career. I would say it definitely took him time to find his feet. But the driver that Graham Rankle is now, especially in the drives he's done, I know he hasn't won since 2017, but he has seriously been knocking on the door. And it's because they just don't have that extra little bit of pace over the course of a race 
that has meant that they haven't been able to say Portland GP this year comes to mind of a race that could have been for them. Obviously, the Indy 500 did the third wheel. He was definitely going to be up in the top guys competing for the win. Uh, it certainly felt like there. And then in 2020, the first Indy GP uh, just couldn't quite get onto Scott Dixon mm. uh, to get yeah. past there. So in Graham Rahal, they have a guy capable of winning races. He's done it before. If the car finds the extra tents, is he good enough to lead a championship charge? That's the question. I think that's, <laughs> that's, 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 it's an unknown. Uh, we've seen consistency. We've seen him gradually build on those performances, like you're saying. But it's just an unknown. Hmm. We haven't seen um, like dominating race winning performances. Um, but we know that's partly due to Ray Hall, Lennon and Lanigan Racing also building as a team and obviously giving Graham more data, but maybe not enough to be challenging right at the top consistently. Basically, although he did nearly get in the top five, uh, if he didn't get unlucky in a few races, he would have been in the top five last year. Hmm. Uh, there, there's so many unknowns of that lineup. Can Graham make that final step up? to be a Joseph Newgarden, a Pato, a Plo, a Scott Dixon, Rossi, whatever. Yeah, things that go against them. Let me let me just check out before we now I wanna go you know, I wanna I wanna check how many wins Takuma Sato got. Because obviously Takuma made it a full time two full time cars in twenty eighteen and obviously um Graham didn't win a race during that time. His last win came in. So during that time, Takuma Sato got four wins, including the Indy 500 in 2020. Wait. Between 2018 and oh, obviously yeah. the 2021 okay. season, where Graham got none. Yeah. That isn't saying that Takuma massively outperformed Graham, but... Is that a nagging feeling? Is he now just a driver who can't find that extra bit to win a race? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the unknown. I feel he has the consistency. He can consistently get top tens. Mm. But yeah, it's like, can he make that final step to be that exceptional talent at the moment? Like your new guard and Pato hurt it. I'd list them all. There's, yeah. there's quite a few to list. Um, yeah. That's kind of, that's a big factor. That's a big piece in the puzzle of whether they can consistently change up the top. And I think the partner, so we'll, we'll leave Christian Lingard out because it's his rookie season. He'll be adapting to the series. He will be capable of uh, an exceptional performance or two throughout the season. I think definitely, as we saw in that qualifying performance, where he qualified P4 at the IMS road course race two. Um, on his only time and I think he came home 14th was it something in the end um, 14th 12th uh, I think yeah he struggled like obviously with the race management but yeah. hey heck he was thrown into it yeah uh, first time and you know he'd only really had one test at Barber beforehand it wasn't mm. like he was going in with a massive backing yeah uh, I think uh, prior to that um, so Lungard you, you know look, he, he's not going to be if Ray Hall can able to compete at the top. It's not going to be Lungard in this first season. But Jack Harvey is another interesting piece of the puzzle because at Maya Shank, he's produced some exceptional performances in qualifying uh, and also podium. I think he's podiumed uh, once or twice for the team, but he's got quite a few kind of top four, five, six performances and also times where he definitely would have competed for race wins or things if his luck hadn't gone against him. Yeah. And there was a lot in 2021 that went against Jack Harvey. Mm. <laughs> and then he looks and goes, uh, Ellie only goes, come on, man. <laughs> really? Uh, oh. But, you know, Elio must have been a great guy for Jack to learn from through the season as well. Uh, but yet, can Jack also be that driver who steps up? Yeah, 100%. Uh 
I kind of see Jack Carvey definitely has the potential uh, to make that, to reach the upper echelons of driving talent. Uh, obviously, being at Maya Shank Racing, there is a part that, because they are a team in development, a bit like Ray, uh, Rail Lenham and Landon Grayson, but I think they're kind of like a couple steps behind or like one step behind. Yeah. Um, so, you know, race strategy, development, data, everything like that can kind of stop a guy from fully achieving at the top. Uh, but I definitely see Jack has that potential mm. to make that jump. It's kind of like, yeah, can Graham or can Jack make that final step? Mm. And I guess that probably is where this debate boils down to yeah. on where you fall and feel from that. Resources-wise, I think they are now in a position they're not going to be able to compete with the names of Andretti, Penske and Ganassi. All right, because they're not as established that. Bobby Rahal is a legend within his own right. Mm. Um, but they're getting there and expansion, but those guys have consistently run, you know, high car teams and at the top with championship winning cars. They aren't quite that, but they are definitely on a level, I would say, like Arrow McLaren SP that can consistently compete with them yeah. financially. And I think team-wise and strategy-wise, I, I think there's no reason why they cannot compete with those guys at the top. I think the debate will come down like we've just had the, drivers. the drivers. And it's kind of the worst time because IndyCar's got one of their most talented grids in a long time. Mm. Uh, I think we spoke about it on one of the podcasts recently of easily being able to name 10 drivers that can challenge for the championship. Mm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's what they've got to contend with, really. Yeah. But that could also be a blessing in disguise because if we're saying Rahul's consistency is one of his strengths yep. going through there and he just finds that Consistency instead of consistently finishing around the sixth, fifth spot, moves it up to consistently finishing third, second with the odd win. Then, in a very competitive grid, that could be enough to bring home a championship. And mm. we know they run well at the 500, so they definitely have capabilities of challenging the big boys. And probably you could say have run better than. Uh, Penske the past couple of seasons since the aero screen's been introduced because yeah. Penske have really struggled in the qualifying mm. uh, with that although their race car still has been useful and having <laughs> useful yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been useful <laughs> I, I think Honda uh, where it comes down to Honda's had the edge at the 500 the yeah. last couple of seasons and obviously Ray Hall are Honda backed so therefore they always stand a chance as it currently stands yeah any final thoughts or are we handing it over to those guys? Yeah, get, get it over to them. Get over to them. So, there we go. Can Rachel Letterman Lanigan compete with the big guys? Kinda. I guess is where we're going on. Uh, are we going to be on the fence? Are we going to be on the fence or are we going to nail down either way? I'm going to say yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're going yes. I see potential in Graham and Jack that they can. Uh, one of them at least. Uh, on a good charge I'm going to go with yes but not yet I don't think 2022 so no. will be the breakthrough <laughs> just to clarify you're going no yeah but it's it's a it's a fishy no <laughs> it's a bit of a grey no you got one hand on the fence <laughs> yeah I'm like no but I'm like but I do see potential the so other side wanna... looks pretty great as well <laughs> Oh, <laughs> championship over there. Wow. God, on the Astor Cup look good over there. Woo. All right. Okay, that's us. We hope you've enjoyed this discussion. Uh, let us know what your thoughts are in the comments below. And as always, if you want us to discuss other topics, uh, drop them down in the comments below and we will bring them into outside the tub. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed. We, I'm hoping to have at least three feature videos uh, done before the end of the year and then we can uh hopefully get a bit more of a regular maybe like an alternate week with this series and uh, a feature video as well uh, for now but right 
If they're new around here and have enjoyed this, what can they do, Stephen? They can like, subscribe and ding that bell. Ding it. But for now, you indie fans, keep racing.